Hello and welcome to the course of HDL Digital Circuit Design. Today's topic is step by step guide for implementing 4 to 1 MUX in FPGA using Xilinx Vivado tool. In previous session, we have gone through how to go ahead with the writing Verilog code in Xilinx Vivado uh, as well as uh, simulating that in, in that tool. Now, in this video, we will be moving ahead with the hardware implementation. Myself, Shilpa Keta Rudravar, Assistant Professor, School of ENTC Engineering, MIT Academy of Engineering, Ayandi Pune. So, moving ahead with today's topic. Now, whenever you want to implement your logic inside the FPGA board, you need to follow some steps. So, first, already we are, uh, we, are uh, we have written a Verilog code. After that, you need to create a XDC file. XDC stands for Xilinx Design Constraint meaning of xdc is user is putting constraint that pin uh, a of mux will be connected to pin v one one of device or whatever pin available on device you are connecting it with the mux inputs so that way you will be knowing that a pin of this mux is connected to this pin of your fpga device so once constraint file is ready you need to go ahead with the bitstream uh, bit generation so here it is a file which is having the data 0101 present over there meaning of this bitstream file indicates what type of uh, internal switches you need to turn on or off for implementing your design inside the fpga board so that bit file whenever you are dumping into the target device whatever the kit we are having that is nexus 4 ddr so it will be making and breaking the connections and according to that it will be creating your functionality once that has been done you need to connect your hardware with a pc whatever you are having uh, over there it will be detecting this hardware whatever you have connected and once that has been detected you need to program a device that is whatever bit file you are having that you need to dump into the target device so these are the steps you need to follow for hardware implementation now here in our lab we are having nexus 4 ddr kit which is having this power uh, pin plugin over here on off button to turn the device on this is ethernet port uh, ethernet port over here this is the usb port uh, over here you are having uh, facility to connect pmods periphery devices over here and here 16 inputs and 16 outputs are provided so here dot leds type of structure you are able to see that are the uh, surface mount led which is used for observing the output and whatever input you need to apply you can apply through these switches so when switch is at the lower side means vcc uh, ground is given and when switch is at upper side meaning of that that uh, vcc is given so that way you can apply your input now why you need to apply input because whatever bit file you have dumped into the target device now this particular device is acting as your functionality whatever you have implemented in this case we have implemented 4 is to 1 mux so here this ic will be working like a 4 is to 1 mux now to uh, verify the functionality or to test it what we will be doing we will be providing the input and that input will be provided in this way by providing the uh, connection to the switch as in the xdc file already we have mentioned that pin uh, this pin is connected to a of your mux this pin is connected to b of mux so that way xdc file is already created and by providing that input we will be checking whether the functionality is achieved and that way you will be able to test your hardware now just to zoom out over here so you are able to see these are the 16 inputs and these are the 16 uh, uh, outputs you are uh, having so whenever you are configuring xdc file you can give a pin of mux as a v10 b as a u11 c as a u12 and d as h6 you can give anything but if you are giving sequentially it will be easy now select line you can give this also but i have uh, in this particular tutorial i will be apl applying l16 and j15 as a select line where my msb will be l16 and my lsb of select line will be j15 and output i'll be observing at this particular point which is v11 so just will be going ahead with the tool over here so moving to the tool in the previous session already we have created a project we have written a code that is very log code mux 4 is to 1 using data flow modeling style that to ternary operator so that already has been done now whatever code you have written that is linked to the design sources whatever test bench you have written that is related uh, linked to the simulation sources now 
you need to write a constraint file and for that here you are able to see this constraint file but this is blank because already I have created and deleted just for showing you. So I will be again creating that. So here it will not be present in your case. Once you are applying that pin configuration that is xdc file it will getting linked with this constraint file. Now you need to click on this mux4 underscore 1 that is your source file and schematic. Once that has been done, you will be able to see that get level netlist and below to that you will be able to see the ports. So whatever ports you are give, given to the mux that is A, B, C, D and Y as well as select 0 and select 1 that you will be able to see it over here. Now what is the role of uh, this that you need to click on this IO standard and you need to select LVCMOS 3.3. Now what is the meaning of LV CMOS that is the low voltage CMOS actually whenever you are having any FPGA that is the VLSI device and it is configured using the CMOS structure. So CMOS require power to operate and that's why it requires 3.3 volt in this particular case of our Nexus 4 DDR kit. So manufacturer will be providing you the details in the PDF uh, format. So according to that you need to select whether it is LV CMOS 3.3 or LV CMOS 1.8. Uh, so in this uh, case, in our case it is LV CMOS 3.3 that is 3.33 uh, 3 volt is required to operate that CMOS. Once that has been done you can uh, do same with your remaining pins that is A, B, C, D and Y. So I will be doing that way only. So one by one you need to do the things. So once that has been done, it will create its uh, syntax in XDC file. Previously I told you it is blank so syntax is created related to that. Now once that has been done, now I have shown you the structure of Nexus port DDR kit whatever available in lab. So from that I need to uh, see that which particular pin can be assigned to A, B, C, D and Y as well as select. So I told you this is what is the pin number uh, which is V10 I will be applying to A, U11 I will be applying to, I will be zooming it. So V10 I will be applying to A, U11, B, U12, C and H6, D as well as Y will be my V11 and my select lines will be MSB will be L16 and LSB will be J15. So that way I will be configuring. So moving ahead with the tool again. So over here I will be writing V10 whatever previously I told you V10. Then I will be writing B as a U11, then C it's U12, then D as a H6 and Y as y V11. V11. So once that has been done, now go ahead with the select. So here there are two select lines, one will be J16, I will be checking it again over here. So it is L16 and J15, L16 and J15. Once that has been done, now you need to save this file. So whenever I am clicking on save, so it will be showing you, it is getting saved. In your case, you will be asked to write a file name because in my case file name is already there because file is already created just for the sake of uh, showing to you. I have just deleted the file so that's why that is created. So you need, in, in your case you need to give the naming. Once that has been done, you need to click to project manager and you will be able to see this mux file created over here. Now as I have previously deleted so it it is showing reload. Once I, have, I am clicking on reload, I am able to see this file. Now just see LV CMOS that I have made everywhere LV CMOS. So that many pin yeah, ports I am having, uh, I am able to see that syntax of LV CMOS. So A, B, C, D that are the input, Y, output and these are two select lines. So I am able to see the syntax for uh, all these pins as a LV CMOS and rest of the pins will be provided with the pin numbers. So I have given V10, U11, U12, H6 as a ABCD, V11 and L6 as the select line and this is my uh, sorry this is my output and these are what the select lines. Now 
at this moment also you can change this particular pin number as per the pins available on the board there is no need to go in the previous uh, flow for changing the pin so once that has been done just save again and you need to click on again your source file that is the Verilog code and click on generate bitstream file so here at the bottom you are able to see that is generate bitstream once you are clicking it will be taking some time and it will be creating your bitstream file so I am clicking on this summation sign which is design summary so everything related to your project where it is created what is the name is given what type of uh, project part you have selected uh, everything you are able to see it over here and the right hand side you are able to see what processes are going on and below window this is the error window or message window where you will be able to see what are the processes are happening and related to information you will be getting if there is error it will get highlighted and if that is not so it will be showing what are the processes going on so here now running optimization is going on after that routing and bit file generation will be happening so now routing started and after that it will be generating bitstream file now what is the role of bitstream file that already I told you that it will be creating 0101 like a file which will be used for configuring your hardware for making programmable switches or programming that programmable switches inside the FPGA you require the bit file so over here we need to wait till that time you need to connect your hardware with your PC through USB cable and once that has been done you need to click on this particular part that is open hardware manager so before clicking to open hardware manager what you need to do you need to connect whatever hardware you are having now here window is pop up and here also you can click if you are closed this by mistakely so you can click over here also now I am clicking over here so open hardware manager at this moment hardware should be connected yes sorry I need to okay now open target I need to connect that device search that device which device is available because already I have connected uh, device to the PC so it is detecting yes it has detected that this particular uh, board is available once that has been done next and finish now you need to follow this green line program device and once I am clicking on this so this particular window is getting pop up and here it will be taking dot bit file as well as the debug file directly and then I'll be clicking on program once I'm clicking on program I'm on at the uh, side over here I'm able to see done bit on the hardware is turning on so once that has been done mean, meaning of that your program is already dump and now you can go ahead with the execution now here again I'm sh showing you I have done click on program now it is showing that hundred percent it has been done and now you can go ahead with the actual hardware implementation so uh, next in the next video I'll be showing how that inside the hardware you'll be able to see that uh, A is getting uh, selected B is getting selected by application of certain select lines so hopefully you understood the flow of creating a XDC file generating a bit file and how to connect the hardware in the next video I'll be showing you how I have connected the hardware and how I'm getting the output in that hardware so uh, by this I'm closing this particular session thank you everyone thank you for patience listening and happy learning